evening. Hey, Michelle, look. Wearing your shirt. Look at there. There you go. Anyhow, been a long time since I posted a video. Long time. Last video I posted, I was in my, my not North Dakota. I believe, uh, doing, uh, doing all the maintenance and all the work on the truck. From there, I went home, the doctor, I think two days, maybe three days at the doc, or at home, not at the doctor. Yeah. It's been a while since I posted. I apologize for that. Uh, I went from a knot. Just give you a little recap of what I did. My knot to Texas. Took three days off. Got a load out of Texas. Went up to Virginia. Virginia to Iowa. Iowa back to Virginia. Where I'm at right now. And then I'm heading to Ohio, dropping off this load down, picking up now in the morning. I'll be driving all night long. Well, it's like 531 miles, I think. I'll be there at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but then from there, I drop off 10 o'clock, and then I have till 4 o'clock, I think, to pick up a load to go to Colorado. And then I don't have a load after that. But I'm sure my will be moving the next day. That's Sunday. I'll probably find a load Monday. Monday afternoon or something like that to take off. But it is unbelievably <laughs> warm here in Virginia. It's 80 degrees right now. What time is it? 8 o'clock? It's like 77 degrees outside. And Jesse, I haven't talked to him, my boss man. I have no AC. Oh, I hate calling him up. <laughs> it just can't be a, a phone call just to, to talk to him. It seems like every time I call him, I have a, a little issue with the truck, which is normal, I guess. You always gonna have something. Well, the clutch on the air on the compressor for the AC is not. It's froze up. I checked fuses. I checked plug-ins. I checked everything today. So I slept today. I don't know how, but I did. It was kind of hot, but I took, I took a good nappy nap for a little while today. So anyhow. Again, I apologize for not getting and posting stuff. I've just been busy. Had a lot of stuff at the house to do. Uh, I could have, I guess, posted at the house, but, you know, I got grandkids there. My mom, my mom wouldn't mind being on here, but just I want to keep that part of my life, I guess, private for right now. But. Went to uh, my grandson Cameron, had his 10th birthday party, and uh, went to his basketball game on a Saturday, and then Saturday night we went roller skating, which I love to roller skate. So that's the choices for the kids for their birthday. Chuck E. Cheese's or roller skating? Well, my birthday's coming up. I guess the same thing applies to me. I'll be 60 years old in August of this year, and my daughter-in-law, Terry, gave me the choice of Chuck E. Cheese's or roller skate. <laughs> I guess I'm a big kid, too, I guess. So I picked roller skate, and I love roller skate. Anywho, my, uh, my cousin Chipper suggested to me that I... I'll tell you a little bit more of my background, I guess. Make it more interesting. What I did, and how I got into trucking, and why it's a good fit for me. Uh, in high school, which was many moons ago, 40 years ago, my dad was a printer. He worked for Xerox, so printing's been a 
part of me for a lot of years, and that's what I did. Uh, high school, we go start back there. Tenth, eleventh, I think twelfth grade, my senior year, all three of those years. I think my freshman year too. I went to school a half a day, and then went to a printing company called Monarch Graphics. Uh, which was right down the street, not that far away from my school, and got credit for that because that's what I wanted to do for a living. And I was fortunate enough to go to a small private school that understood that. And they, I guess, you know, allowed me to do that. And that's what I did. That's my background before I got into trucking. I was a pressman. Uh, I, uh, I worked at a lot of places. You know, printing start at the bottom and you work your way up to the front of the press. So I put my dues in and became a head pressman, a bunch of other stuff, and just got, got worn out, I guess. You know, got tired of it. It was kind of not challenging anymore. Uh, the modern day, you know, the last press I, I, I've run presses at two and a half million dollar printing presses. I did printing for Disney, PGA Golf Tour. I did their programs. It's high end printing stuff that I did. And it started getting a computer, or it's a console basically, and you push buttons to do everything. Uh, the old days, it was these two fingers, your thumb and your index finger. You moved the keys and just took the craftsman out of it. Oh man, my battery's low. Took the craftsman out of it, so and plus I got burned out on it. So I had the great idea of, well, let me go back here. In between that, I've, I've never been the one to, I guess, settle down in one place too long. Hence the uh, my name of my channel, Tumbleweed, I guess. <laughs> Nomad, uh, just gypsy, whatever you want to call me. That's how I've always been. I, I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. Once I got out of school, I went to Florida, Fort Lauderdale, spent some time down there in printing, all printing. Went back, I think, two years or something like that, three years in Florida. Went back to Ohio, sold my house in Florida, bought a house in Ohio. Spent time there, two, three years, I think. Went back to Florida. I had a pattern of that for about, I don't know, 10 years maybe, something around in there. And then, uh, then I uh, believe I got divorced, remarried. Oh, mercy. I'm not going to be able to get back up. And then moved to Arizona. And uh, loved it out there. And, that, you know, so mom came out there with dad. We took care of dad. Me and my wife did, Sue Ann. And then all that stuff happened. And then, anyhow. But prior to that, I'm rambling here and losing my train of thought a little bit. So I got burned out in printing and I opened up a construction company. <laughs> uh, things you do in life. Well, it, it did good for a little while until the housing market hit. That big uh, crash of the housing uh, collapse. <sighs> Built custom homes, blah, blah, blah. And then... I lived in Hilliard at the time when that was going on. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. I didn't want to go back into printing. I could have, uh, but I didn't. And my mom came over with a truck, a little toy truck, just the bobtail of the truck. It was a uh, Freightliner Classic, blue. You know where I'm going here. This is. Good. This is what I think you should do, Ma says. All right. So I checked into uh, schools and went to Roadmaster, truck driving school there in Columbus, Ohio. Did my thing there, graduated, and then signed on uh, 
with Warner. Everybody's gonna say, oh, look at well, Warner, the old man owned it then. It was a good company. Now I know nothing about it, but when the old man owned it, he ran that place pretty good. And I made good money as a company driver. Got my experience and uh, all that good stuff. And that's where I met my wife that passed away, Sue Lynn. And then me and her teamed up, bought her truck, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the rest is history, I guess. I got, uh, the old saying is, once you get that diesel in your blood, you can't get that diesel out. And uh, that's what's happened to me. I love trucking. I love everything about it. I love the people I meet all the time. I, I love the different experience and different scenery and the places I go. I'm not one to do a dedicated route. Drivers that do that, yeah, that's all right. I can't do it. I tried to do, when I was in Arizona, I tried to do that day cab stuff, you know, home every night. That's just not me. <laughs> I'm too much of a tumbleweed, I guess. I hauled milk for two weeks, handed the dude the keys and said, see you later. I can't do this anymore. So, so when we bought our other truck. But anyhow, once you have that diesel in you, you know, I guess the tumbleweed, I, I like what I'm doing. Right now, it is a, it's a hard thing right now to do. I mean, the rates are really, really kind of, <laughs> they're not good, that's for sure. But, you know, what am I going to do? Park my truck? I know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to sound like, what? I know a lot of people that, oh, I'm just going to park my truck. And do what? You're not a truck driver in my mind. You gotta make adjustments and just knuckle down and just do it. And that's what I'm doing, you know? I'm finding good rates. They're not as good as they used to be, but I'm making money. You know, I'm making money for Jesse, you know, keep rolling. And I'm the type that I stay out a month and a half, two months at a time. Like right now, I'm not going home until See, my mom's birthday is uh, April 19th. That will be two months, a little over two months. Then I'll go home for two, three days, and maybe four days, and then hit the road again. That's what you do. I watch this couple. Well, let me back up. So that that's a little, a little insight on my uh, experience, I guess, and how I got into trucking and. I just, my cousin Chipper, you know, I called him up after mom bought over that truck, that little matchbox semi truck, called him up and he said, perfect. Cause I've always been a tumbleweed, man. I've always, I can't, and I got my roots set in Texas right now, you know, and that's probably where I'll be till I die. And you know, trucking, they'll probably, Jesse will probably be peeling my fingers off that daggone steering wheel. You know, I'll take the dirt nap there probably. And I won't do anything else. I love it. it. It's just, it's a different lifestyle and everybody can't do it. You know, all these new drivers out here, <laughs> they, they're not truck drivers, man. They're steering wheel holders. And you experienced guys are been in trucking longer than me and as long as me you know what I'm talking about flip flop wearing shorts wearing driving these automatics they think their cars are going through truck stops at 30 miles an hour and they're, just, they're not truck drivers man in my opinion and that gets me to my little rant that I want to go on <laughs> again I love this couple trucking together I mean I, I'm a nobody you know on this YouTube stuff I'm just getting started but I've watched a lot of people uh, on YouTube I watched Gentry and Son I think that dude's pretty cool too you know but trucking together I watch them all the time and they've adapted they got that's what you got to do in trucking if you're a real truck driver you're not going to give that up 
and hint, this is where I'm going with this. You're going to find a way to make it happen. And that's what that couple has done. They had their own authority. I've had my own authority. It sucks to close that up, to shut that down. But in these times, you adapt and you do what you have to do to keep them wheels rolling and that money coming in. They're not into the YouTube to make money. They're into trucking. They love trucking. Martin, that dude is awesome. So is Alice. I mean, both of them, you know. But I watch these other guys that... <laughs> one in particular, and I'm not going to mention him because he, I'm going to... He's not a truck driver. Been in the business four years or five years, whatever. He's got a beautiful truck, beautiful family. I'm not knocking that. You know, it's awesome. But the braggadocious and bragging, that, that ain't right. I don't see Martin and Alice bragging about the things they have and the toys they have. They work their butt off for that stuff. They're not using the YouTube money. Because as she said, they don't make that much money off of YouTube. They're making money off of trucking. That's what they're about. And they've adapted. They've added, they got three trucks now. One for him, one for her, and the team truck. They're making it happen. They're being blessed, in my opinion. This other guy, he's got a lot of followers. He makes about $175,000 off of YouTube. If it wasn't for YouTube, if he was just solely dependent on his trucking income, that's why I say he's not a truck driver. He's not a truck driver. He doesn't have that diesel in his blood. If if he wouldn't have a third of what he has if, if he was just relying on his trucking income. And he's just, and he's gotta watch it, man. Here's my thing. God gives you what you want. I heard this said one time. God gives you what you want just to see if you can handle it. To me, that dude ain't doing it right. He ain't handling it. He's not humble. Martin and Alice, they're a humble couple. And they're getting blessed for that. The other guy, he's too arrogant. I know he's got a lot of followers and a lot about this and that. And, Uber driving now? Come on, man. Do what you have to do. If you're a real truck driver, do what you have to do to make money. Make that sacrifice. Oh, I want to be home every night for my family. Well, you know what? Sometimes <laughs> you got to earn for your family. So if it wasn't for a YouTube channel, I guy would be up, up the creek without a bunch of paddles. And, and to me, that's not right. That's not showing the, the reality out here being a truck driver. What we go through. What you have to do. I changed lanes. Uh, you know, I'd go from Utah to Florida. Good money. Did that for a long time. Well, the money's not there now. The money's not there at all. So I changed it up. That's what you got to do. That's truck driving. I've probably changed my lanes three or four times, you know? And again, that's, you know, I like going all over the country. I don't go to New York, Jersey, the East Coast. I don't go to California. Been to California like four weeks ago because I had to. But normally, I don't go out there. I don't want to. <laughs> Not knocking California. Well, I kind of am because it's messed up right now. It's not the people. It's, yeah, it's who's running that state. But let's not get into that. But anyhow, I am rambling, aren't I? But I just wanted to come on here and say that. You know, I'm uh, I'm running hard. I work hard. Diabetes kind of slows me down sometimes. It's hard to have a gnat, dealing with that, eating right, all that stuff, and running hard. And I'll be running hard till Sunday. And right now I got some steaks, steak strips on the pan in there on my cooker. Get me a good meal in because I got a long night to drive. Don't be 
be I, I don't know it, it just bothers me that people that are on YouTube kind of oh look at this house look at this lake look at my boats look at my cars look at this look at that and you ain't making that off of that gone trucking business with one truck you ain't doing that the most that one truck can make is 200 maybe 230 a, a year you ain't afford that two houses a boat all these cars all, you know. so that's wrong for you to get on YouTube and, and glorify it, it it just bugs the crap out of me and I have to say it and like I said I'm just a little peon on this YouTube stuff man you know I don't have I don't even know how many followers I got or views or whatever I don't I don't even keep track of it I just want to come on here and speak my mind about trucking and what I go through and I've had I've had a rough couple weeks here you know We're getting back to rolling again and the truck's doing good today <laughs> that suck not having AC man y'all been through it I don't know what the heck's going on huh something with these trucks you know it's a 2010 we got we just got it for a really good price same with this trailer I'm hauling we got it for a really good price we put tires on it and that's about it you know so, but anyhow but I'd get on here and tell you a little bit hopefully that I mean I could get it you know it's this I love trucking you ain't gonna be a millionaire unless you own about five or six trucks. And even then, like Jesse says, you know, he's got three trucks plus the hot shots. I mean, staying alive, we're rolling. He takes care of everything. He needs to be fixed on the truck. He's a good boss. He's a real good boss. So, yeah. But again, going back off. Oh, back to that dude that went for YouTube. That dude wouldn't have Jack. I'll tell you that. Uh, Alice and Martin trucking together. They're doing it right. And they show the real stuff of trucking. The real stuff. You know? So they're not arrogant. They're not braggadocious. They're, they're just really good, good people. So anyhow, well, I'm going to get out of here. I think I'm uh, at a red light, but I think uh, we're about done with me here, so I'm going to boogie on down the road. I hope you all's day's good. I hope my night's good. I'm in the mood to drive, so uh, you'll be good and stay out of trouble, and I shall talk to you all tomorrow. We'll check in to you when I get to Ohio. All right. Be safe, y'all. Later.